Okay, guys, we're going to talk about SDS page electrophoresis. So this is separating proteins on the basis of size. So we have a basic setup. We have a sample which contains a series of known marker proteins. So these are proteins of known molecular weight, which will be coloured. You use these so that you have an idea about how large your protein is, and you can actually calibrate the, using these markers, so you can work out exactly the size of your unknown samples. We also have two samples here. So these have been boiled and put into the loading buffer, which is the SDS buffer to denature the protein. That's our first sample. And our second sample, unfortunately, as you can see, was dropped and has got a lot of air bubbles in it. If this happens to you, don't worry. What you need to do is to actually thin this down using a centrifuge, as you were shown in the video before, and that will help remove the air bubbles. So as you can see, we spun that sample down. All of those air bubbles have now gone. So you're ready to load your sample into the gel. To prepare your gel, you're going to need your tank. You're going to need a gel which comes pre-packed. And in this example, because we're only using the one gel, we also need a buffer, a buffer dam. So what you need to do is you need to take this out of the tank and you're going to open these two flaps on the side. I'm going to load the buffer down first. As you can see, it says this side, I don't know if you can see that, this side towards the gasket on this side. It's got a little lip. So I'm going to put that into the back using these notches on the back, pushing down firmly to make sure that that is seated. And you want to make sure that there is a seal all the way around on this. For the salt, for the actual gel, what you need to do is try that open. Now, the first thing to note is that on the bottom of these gels, there is a green strip of tape. You need to make sure that that tape is removed. If you don't do that, it insulates the bottom of the gel, so that it, and this doesn't allow any electric current to flow through your gel. So if you still got that on, you'll load all your samples, you'll come to run the gel, and it won't work, and you get very frustrated because you don't have to take your gel out again. What you can see in the gel here is we have our main resolving gel, and then there's a stacking gel above. These have come precast, and they have a comb already inserted, so from wells 1 to 10. The trickiest part of this process is actually getting the comb out of the gels. So what you want to do is you want to angle the gel away from you and push firmly on that flap. You can see it will come out, and we now have our sample wells here. So hopefully you'll be able to see that numbered well from 1 to 10. If they've gone a little bit wonky, which is what's happened here, what you need to do is just flip away from you, and that will help to straighten the wells. You'll notice on the gel that the back plate is slightly shorter than the front plate. So you can see there's a lip on your gel here and your front plate. You want to make sure the back plate is facing in towards the green seal. Again, making sure that there is a tight seal all the way around and close the two wing flaps up. What's always a good idea is before you load any of your samples is to pour a small amount of running buffer into the well in the middle and make sure that it's not leaking. So you can see here, no liquid is coming out of the bottom of the dam. You can then load that into the tank, making sure that the red side on the tank here, which you can see on the top, aligns with the red electrode and the black to the black electrode. What you then need to do is to fill up the reservoir completely, making sure it's overflowing, and do the same on the back, which we set up earlier. And then you can fill the tank, and there's a mark on the side of the tank, which you can't see from this angle, which gives you a rough idea of where you need to fill to. What is always a good idea is to make sure you wash the wells as well. So take a one mil pipette and just pipette some of the liquid up from the middle. And all you're doing is just running your pipette along the top of the gel a few times. And what this does is make sure that you have running buffer in all of the wells that you're going to load.
So that's the basic setup. You can see you have your gel here and you have the wells labeled one to 10. The first thing that you're going to load is your marker. You don't need very much of this. You only need about five microliters of it. The proteins are very concentrated. So I'm gonna use a white tip with a pipette set to five microliters. Down to the first stop, gently pipette five microliters. Now the trick to this is to angle your pipette towards the front of the gel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the front plate until I feel the pipette just touch the plate and slide directly down. And what you'll do is you'll feel resistance when you come to the back plate. So you remember the back plate is lower. As you slide down, you'll basically feel the resistance. Don't try and push the pipette into the well. And all I'm gonna do is very gently start to push the pipette down. And I'm allowing gravity to draw my sample down into the well. I don't want to pipette too fast, otherwise it will create swirls in the well, which will mean that my sample will spill over into another well. Now, this is one time when you don't want to go to the second stop. So go to the first stop and just leave it there for a few seconds. Come away completely from your well and then release the pipette. So we now have five microliters of our marker in this first well. The samples, because they are less concentrated, we need, we need more of them. So I'm going to load my first sample. This time I'm going to be using a yellow pipette tip, and I've got my pipette set to 30 microliters. So you need to pipette 30 microliters of sample. Again, down to the first stop, into my sample, and gently pipette up. This time I'm going to load into the second well. So again, I want to come to the front plate and very gently slide down just until I feel my tip touch the back plate. And I'm going to very gently, very slowly start to press the plunger. And you can see that gravity is drawing my sample all the way down to the bottom of the well. So it's a very careful process. You just need to make sure that you're preparing slowly especially as you get nearer and nearer to the top. You don't want to prepare too fast, otherwise your sample might run into the next well. When you do then, as I said, just come completely away from your well before you release your pipette. I repeat that process for my second sample. So this was the one that I centrifuged. Again, first start into my sample, pipette up. And this time I'm going to go to the third well, angling it towards the front plate, down slowly and prepare in. And you can see that that is being drawn down to the bottom of the well, like so. Now, just to show you what happens if you prepare too quickly, I'm gonna, re I'm gonna load this sample again, and I'm gonna come across a few wells. I'm gonna go into well six. So if I prepare too quickly, as you can see, all of my sample spills out. It's starting to come down the side. It's into well five, so you're going to contaminate wells to the left and to the right of your sample. So you, this is why you need to be very careful and to load your sample slowly. Okay, so now that you've loaded all your samples into the gel, we have to run an electric current through that gel, which will pull the proteins down and help separate them by size. To do that, we have our lid, which has a red and a, uh, a black. And that's where these correspond to the red and the black electrodes in the tank. So it's really important when you load your sample and you put your tank on, you make sure that you're going red to red and black to black. Make sure it's down firmly and push down. The other end, exactly the same. We have a black and a red electrode. You need to make sure that they correspond to the, red, the black and the red circles on the power pack. Now, when you're running a gel, you normally have about 30 milliamps running through each gel. When you do on the power pack, you can see that it says constant ampage. Press that and enter 30. And then all we're going to do is press run. And that will start putting 30 amps through the gel, which will allow our samples to start being pulled down towards the bottom of the gel. Now, because you're running electricity through the gel, it's going to get hot. The one little trick that you can use to heat is going to cool to put it into an ice pack and just put ice all the way around the sample 
and then you'll be able to see slowly that you, the samples are already starting to move through the resolving gel. And once they get down, sorry, the stacking gel, and then when they get down into the resolving gel, you'll start to see them separate by size. So we're going to run this gel and join us again in about 45 minutes. We'll see. Okay, so we've just been running this sample now for a couple of minutes. You can already see that the samples are starting to move down towards the, stock, the top of the resolving gel. So this is your marker and the two samples that we loaded. And here in well five and six, you can see where we spilt our sample over into the neighbouring well. Now, one way that you can tell whether or not your samples are running, which you can't see very clearly on the video, but there's a sort of very thin wire that runs along the bottom of your tank. If you see bubbles coming off that as you're passing current through, then you know your sample is running correctly. So that's just one little trick, just to make sure your samples run correctly. Okay, so we've been running the gel for about an hour now. So what we're going to see is the result of that. So we'll just take the off. All you want to do is open up our tank, open the wing clips, and then all of the fluid that was inside will start to drain out. And this is our gel. Now, a health and safety point, it's really important whenever you are handling gels that you wear gloves. These gels contain acrylamide, which has been shown to be a neurotoxin. It can contribute to amyloid plaques, which leads to Alzheimer's. So it's really important you always wear gloves. What you will be able to see is where we ran the samples. This in lane one was our marker. You can see faintly on the outside here where the marker has run. And this is where the samples have run to at the bottom of the gel. So it's important that you keep an eye on how long a gel runs for so you don't lose samples off the bottom of your gel. What we now need to do is to get the gel, which is inside this cassette, out. To do that, we use one of these tools and we just need to insert between the two parts of the gel and twist it. You'll see there are arrows around the cassette. You just need to insert and twist. And then the two halves should clear the part. The gel will stay stuck to one side. It doesn't really matter which side it is at the moment. Now, some people will say that you want to try and peel the gel off and get it into a solution. I find if you do that, you run the risk of actually tearing the gel. So a much easier way is just to put the gel face down into the liquid. Just let it run back and forth and the gel will peel off completely off the plate that is now in the liquid. It's important you keep it under, under the liquid so that the gel doesn't start to dry out. And what you would do now is you would actually visualise that using a gel dock or you would stain the gel using Kamasi so that you could visualise where the proteins of interest are. So that's our page in a nutshell.